Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel if you're new, and welcome back if you're not. Today, I'm going to be making an OPR guide. Let me know what you guys think about it by leaving your thoughts down below in the comments. First things first, I'm going to be going over the basics, then I'm going to be going over the roles, and then I'm going to be going over the strategies. I would recommend watching the entire video, that way you stay along with us and understand what's going on. And this video isn't just for new players, it's also for veterans too. So pretty much anyone can have a listen, maybe learn some, maybe try something new that they didn't before. And these tips will definitely help you out in OPR. Okay, so first things first, OP in OPR, there's three POIs to capture. There's also two PVE POIs, and I'll talk more about those in a sec. You need 500 score to get a reward, and you need 1,000 points to win overall. Score and points are different. Score is like player performance, and points is match point. They are not the same. The two PvE fights are Baroness. If you kill Baroness, the enemy match points are frozen for two and a half minutes. The other PvE POI is the Corrupted Portal. If you do the Corrupted Portal, you get a Summoning Stone, which actually can come in handy, which you can use for offense or defense. Once you get a Summoning Stone, you can take it to one of the Summoning Shrines outside of the fort. There's going to be one Summoning Shrine on either side of the fort, next to or close to the doors. The three POIs you need to capture is Luna or Moon, Soul or Star, and finally, Astra or Sun, or sometimes people will even call it just Mid. At these three POIs, you can build turrets, you can build burning oil, doors, camps, and a spawn point. At each one of these POIs, there's also a storage that you can only put items that you collected in the OPR in the storage, and an armory. There's four armories to buy stuff at, like speed buffs and TNT, and there's a bunch of other things in there too. One thing you're gonna wanna do, whether you are a builder or not, is pick up any loot bags you find on dead bodies, because you used to drop all your items on death, but now you only drop a certain amount on death. So even if you die and respawn back at the camp, you'll still have a bunch of materials on you that you can use towards the base. You're going to want to use these materials right away as soon as you respawn, get them out of your inventory, whether that means putting them in the storage or using them to build up the base. Definitely, don't be shy to pick up these loot bags because whether you're going to use it to build on the base or just throw it in the storage, if you throw it in the storage, someone else can use it to build up the base and you'll be helping out the team overall regardless. Next up, let's move on to the roles. The roles for OPR are obviously healer and tank. Then we have DPS close, which is melee, blunderbuss, and like flamethrower. And then we have DPS range, which is like musket and bow. I'm going to go through each role now and kind of explain what everybody's job is in this OPR. So for healer, a healer's job is to protect the DPS close. The healer's job is also to protect the DPS range. The healer's job is also to protect the tank. So healers have a big responsibility in OPR by far, and there's definitely not enough of them in the game. So if you were thinking about joining OPR and you want to be a role that you can actually help out the team with, go healer. There's not enough of them in the game right now. Definitely go healer and everybody will love you. Whether you're good or bad, they'll just be happy to have some heals. And the more you play the healer, the better you will be at it. Let's move on to the DPS range though. The DPS range job, this is the musket and the bow players. Their job primarily is to kill the other team's healers. So basically, the DPS range wants to be constantly hitting their back line, whether it's their range you mainly want to be going for their healers if you're dps range because if you kill their healers or if they have to fall back then every everything else is going to crumble like the the tanks are going to die the dps close is going to die the range is going to die like if you can push back that heal line everybody else has to has to fall back with them or they're just going to die so the dps range you're going to want to aim for the healers you don't want to die going for the healer you want to try to kill those healers as quickly as possible the tank's job is going to be just a tank the tank is just absorb damage stay alive do not die absorb damage that's all the tank wants to do is just stay alive and absorb damage the longer he's doing that the better it is for everybody dps close what you're going to want to do is protect the healer so a couple of their guys might be going for the back line maybe a couple flankers maybe a couple of their melee guys flanked or whatever 
but you are going to want to protect our healers like your team's healers you're going to want to protect them you're also going to want to be trying to go for some picks as well so dps close you're kind of going to be going in and out of the battle mainly protecting the healers but also going for your picks as well but yeah dps close have a very important job to protect the healers everybody's trying to protect the healer but DPS close, you want to jump on that. As soon as someone tries to get your healer, you want to get them out of, the, out, of, out of the game ASAP. So now that everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing from this nice chart I made. Healer protects DPS range. DPS range kills healers. Healer protects tank. Tank, tanks. Healer protects DPS close. DPS close protects healers. And then they try to go for kills as well. I really think for new players, the two best roles that you could choose is really between a DPS range and a healer. A healer is going to be very important to the whole team. And you're kind of on the back line. Yeah, people are trying to shoot you with their bows and stuff. But uh, you're not on that front line. You're not taking a bunch of damage because you won't have the gear for it. If you're new to OPR, you're not going to have the gear to absorb the damage. So for new players, I'd really recommend either going healer or DPS ranged. Again, and don't, don't be scared about going healer like you're worried that you're not that good or whatever. Again, you'll get better over time. And also, people would really just be happy to have heals on their team. And in DPS range, the reason why I say this one is because DPS close definitely takes a little bit more of knowing the flow of combat in New World because you're right there in the action. But DPS range, you get a little bit more leeway. Um, you're not instantly in the action there. If you see someone coming at you, you can you know decide to run or stay or you know do whatever you want. You have some options to DPS range, and you can still output that damage to their back line. Um, helping out the team overall as well. So if you're looking for what role to be in OPR as a new player, you're not too sure, fresh 60 or whatever, definitely I would say DPS range or healer. But ultimately it comes down to whatever you enjoy. If you enjoy being the tank, be the tank. If you enjoy doing DPS close, do DPS close. If you enjoy doing DPS, do whatever you want. Just have fun at the end of the day. That's all that really matters. But my suggestion, DPS range or heals. Anyways, let's move on. Strategy. There's a bunch of strategies you can do in New World. I'm only going to be going over a couple here. I made these strategies solo friendly and group friendly. So no matter what your play style is, you can do one of these strategies if you wish. Uh, these strategies are, and I'm going to be going over each one individually, is Zerg, most common. This is just another fancy word for a group of players just rushing. Builder, this is actually a very, very important role. Back capping, which pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go over later. TNT cluster bomb, I like to call it. And a tier three door. Yeah, that's what it's called, tier three door. So I'll be going over builder first. The builder is a passive role. It's very, very important. If you're not the best at PVP, you can contribute just by being a builder for the base. This means collecting weird wood, collecting the ore and collecting leather, bringing it back to the base and building it up, building the spawn point, building the doors, building turrets. Uh, a builder is very, very important for a good defense. Every game needs at least one builder. Uh, two builders you can get away with, uh, but at least one builder you need in every game. So if you aren't the best at PvP, but you still want to contribute, you still like OPR, you you know you like you want to play with everybody else, uh, you could definitely be the builder, and that is still a very important role. Re uh, having that spawn point there at the outpost saves you like that much more time if you need to respawn and get back to the fight or whatever. Definitely don't sleep on the builder. There might be time when you are a builder where uh, someone is trying to do the back cap strat and come around and so there might be that time where you have to uh, retreat or if you're a little bit more confident in uh, your PvP skills you can take on the 1v1 or sometimes it might be a little group of people you know just make the call yourself but uh, builders are very very important to keep that forward up if you see if you're a builder and you're building up your main base or whatever uh, you can do call outs in the raid chat and say like oh there's someone trying to break down my door uh, back at sun and then people who are respawning will help you out if you are a builder you want to be preparing for the tier 3 door strat so what this tier 3 door strat is is basically a builder will build up the base but they'll get the door to tier 3 you can upgrade it and they'll stockpile materials for the door so basically all game you just 
preparing for uh, a zerg or a, a push or you're just preparing for an attack and so when they do rush up to the door since it's tier three it can withstand so much damage that you can actually out repair the damage so even if you're passive even if you're not the best at pvp uh, you can be the builder, build up the base, and then do the tier 3 door strat where you have so much materials just to keep repairing the door as they're attacking it, and uh, they won't be able to get in. If you have enough materials, you can hold them off until your team pushes them back, hopefully. Um, so that's actually a really good strategy. Again, don't sleep on the builder, and you need one at least per game. You can get away with two, but really, like, that's max. Like, two builders max per team. All right, so let's move on to the Zerg strat. So for the Zerg strat, what you're gonna do is, let's just say you start out in this base here. You're literally just gonna follow this route and get to this door as quickly as possible. Say you start from this side, you're gonna follow this route. and try to get there as quickly as possible. So once you're at this base, basically no matter what side you're on, you're gonna wanna try to fill the inside and spread out. So no matter what side you're on, whether you're coming from this side or the other side, you're gonna go into the base and spread out on either side. If you are DPS or healer, um, the tank wants to go right down the middle and fight the giant group. The range people, are instantly gonna go up top is a staircase right there they're either gonna go up top or the range people are gonna sit out here and shoot in now you don't need every range guy outside of the fort shooting in so if you already see like a group of two or three sitting out there go inside and definitely hit up top here same with this side this side also has a staircase here so you're gonna go up that staircase and again you're gonna have a couple guys probably sitting out here but you're gonna want a couple range guys up top here on both sides also your healers are going to want to be inside too if you can the healers gonna want to be up top or if you're getting targeted you're gonna want to just try to blend in with the crowd here um, on either side and obviously if you can't hold it down inside you're not gonna want to die for it you're gonna want to fall back to these positions if anything and basically whoever takes the mid here um you're just gonna keep pushing out and you're gonna push right down to their base like that's all you're gonna do it's just a, it's just a hard push so if you take mid if your team ends up being victorious you're just gonna keep pushing and you're gonna go all the way to their spawn and spawn kill them it's actually pretty nice okay now what you're gonna do for the back capping strategy it's pretty self-explanatory but i'm gonna go over it just in case so basically if they own this territory and this territory this base and this base and they're pushing up here to take your main base the best strategy would literally to be flanking all the way around and being a nuisance to their team just back half in this base maybe pushing up and back half in that base too but this one would be a risky push um instead of pushing that way you'd want to if you were up here you'd want to back around here if you saw some enemies coming coming in from this side you'd backtrack back to the mine over here and you'd either rat it out and then run back in or you would uh you could go for the corrupted portal here but the one thing is is if you're a back capper is you don't want to die so if you're over here and you see a bunch of enemies on this base you're gonna want to wait until they all leave and then push in like you you want to be a complete nuisance you don't want to ever die because then you have to run all the way back and that's a long run like you, you don't want to do that but yeah if you're back capping you really want to rat it out either in this mine or even if you're down here trying to capture this base you'd want to rat it out in this mine and if you're getting chased just back cap back to your people but yeah back capping could be a make or break i've had back cappers save a game completely just for going in behind them and again you can do this solo you can ride out here by yourself you can be out here with a squad of three like your buddies or whatever and then you could be a total nuisance and you don't have to be the best pvp to do this either like once you see some enemies coming down for you um you could just run and just keep being a nuisance keep distracting them from the front line um, but yeah, back capping is actually very important. Very, very important. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the TNT cluster bomb. So this strategy, what it basically requires you to do 
is collect a bunch of vials of suspended azoth in OPR. You're going to go to any armory in one of the outposts or your main spawn and you're basically just going to buy a bunch of TNT. And what you can do with this TNT is if someone's doing the tier 3 door strat, you can blow up the door with using the TNT. You got to be very careful though with that one because they can blow up the TNT before you're ready to do it and ruin the plan. Um, but you can also take this TNT and go to like Baron for example and you can use the TNT to one tap Baron. But again, this is also a risky strategy because they could show up and ruin the plan. Um, the TNT cluster bomb is a very risky strategy, but if you can get it to work and pay off, oh my, your team will appreciate you so, so much. But yeah, you can use it to take down doors, you can use it to take down Baron, use it for the summoning stone creatures. And there's more strategies out there that you can do. But these were just five strategies that you could do as a group or a solo. Like, you don't need one or the other to do these strategies in particular. Guys, anyways, I hope this video helped. If it helped, make sure to leave a like. Leave your opinion down below in a comment if it helped or didn't help, how it helped, how it didn't. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because that definitely helps. And if you guys like this video, I will come out with more in the future that is like this one. Alright guys, that's it. I'm outie. Peace.